welcome to our From the Top series where we talk to the leaders in aerospace across the world. Today we're joined by David Ziegler, who is the Vice President for Aerospace and Defence with Dassault System. And he's with us now, he's got a great background. He's worked with uh, the Airport de Paris, he's worked for a number of years with Airbus, now with Dassault System running the 3D experience part of the business as well that's making such a difference to technology as we see it. David, welcome to the program. It's lovely to have us with you. And, and Desso System, quite a big company, isn't it now? It's really grown. Yeah, over the uh, over more than 40 years of history now, we are, uh, I believe, around 17,000 employees worldwide. Uh, we cover more than 130 sites. And uh, But what matters really to us is, uh, of course, the number of users uh, of our solutions. And I do believe now that there are more than uh, 25 million of people using our solutions every day. Wow, that's, that's incredible. And in the aerospace and defense segment, that's quite a, quite a large part of the business, isn't it? It is, it is. And we're very proud to partner with uh, some of the major uh, customers out there, whether we are talking about commercial aviation with uh, Boeing and Airbus, of course, uh, but as well in uh, the defense sector with uh, Lockheed Martin, uh, with Dassault Aviation and uh, many, many, many other companies. Uh, to be honest, uh, out of the 10 aircraft that are flying today, uh, 10 of them are using some part of our solution. <laughs> That's quite incredible. And I've seen this before with your 3D modeling and simulation and that 3D experience, um, as you call it. And I, I know there's been phenomenal benefits in aerospace and uh, manuf manufacturing. Um, during this recent COVID-19 um, pandemic, uh, the company's actually been doing some work on modeling there. Just tell us what you're doing and how you're, you're helping us get the public to get confidence again in flying. Well, you know, first, aviation is a key sector for the world economy. It provides more than 60 million jobs worldwide. It's responsible for up to $3 trillion in, uh, in GDP. And clearly, with the impact of COVID, the air traffic has been reduced dramatically, uh, down to 10%, actually, of what it was before. Uh, and I have to say that during this crisis, our perception of flying has changed. Uh, people are scared uh, about flying again. A uh, specific survey from Mayata is showing actually that 60% uh, of travelers were unsure about traveling again. Uh, therefore, for the public at large, it's critical to regain confidence uh, in traveling to restart the economy and uh, contribute, of course, to the, uh, the world exchanges. On our side, uh, we've been in touch with several of our customers, both airlines uh, and airports of this world, uh, to give them access to our solutions. Essentially, what we do for airlines, uh, they can use our simulation tools uh, that are used in the commercial sector by typical air framers, and they can assess the circulation of airflow in the cabin and define uh, the safe procedures that are needed to ensure a safe flight. Uh, as far as airports uh, are concerned, they can run simulations of airflow in their building to see what are the zones that are not covered by the uh, airflow, by the ventilation, and corner them off in order to ensure passenger safety. They can also use the digital twin uh, of their buildings to run scenarios on social distancing uh, and therefore reduce the delays on the impacts uh, for board. And the digital twin is, is, is really a, a great concept, isn't it? I mean, you worked with um, Airport de Paris for some time and how does that work with that building of the smart airport and the digital twins? Where do you, where do you get involved in that? So um, talking about airports, you know, right now they're a little bit at a standstill in terms of uh, traffic, but it doesn't mean they have not been busy, right? Uh, of course, uh, during this pandemic crisis, and especially at Aéroport de Paris, uh, they have established new procedures to ensure social distancing. They've been uh, cleaning and uh, making sure uh, that everything is ready for the passengers to, uh, to fly again. So what is now at stake uh, for them and for all the airports is how to resynchronize operations, how to plan accordingly for the disruptions uh, that may happen because of these new procedures. Uh, there will be a lot of tests, trial and error. So the digital twin here is helping them to run passenger flow optimization 
uh, for them to guarantee both the safety of passengers and ensure the maximum efficiency uh, of their operations. Now, I wonder if that's going to be the same with the manufacturers, because the OEMs, of course, are having a torrid time and uh, the airlines are telling the OEMs, look, you've got to accept cancellations or postponements. So we know it's going to be slow for OEMs for the next two years, let's say. Is this a chance for them to really review the way that they they operate and introduce some of the new digital technologies and and move forward with artificial intelligence and so on? So uh, you are right. I mean, uh, commercial aviation has really been impacted with a drop down to 50% in terms of deliveries. Uh, however, there are other sectors as well, uh, such as defense uh, and space that continue to, uh, to grow. Uh, space continues to be the new frontier. Uh, both the US and China are considering going to Mars. We also see uh, a lot of startups uh, in what we call new space, redefining this, uh, this frontier. So there are still a lot of opportunities in, uh, in space and defense, and of course, we are, uh, we are going after them. So Dassault System is working with um, urban air mobility and the EV tolls and, and the future of aircraft as well. Yeah, we are. Uh, we do believe that urban air mobility is the new frontier for, uh, for aviation. Uh, what is sure uh, is that urban air mobility is bringing a lot of innovation to the aerospace world. Uh, whether we're talking about the electrification of aircraft, hybrid technologies, the use of batteries, there are a lot of innovations in that field. So we are proud, of course, that our technology is supporting five out of the six participants in uh, Uber Elevate, which is great achievements for, for our teams. Uh, and while there has been already a lot of efforts from uh, civil aviation authorities to provide a framework uh, for these operations, there are still a lot of challenges for this startup you know, to, to produce at rate and to become mainstream. But what's interesting in that new field is that startups can now benefit from cloud solutions, uh, enabling them to directly start operations without the big infrastructure for the OEMs. So a question that we ask the leaders in aerospace all the time is what is it then that keeps you awake at night? <laughs> Great question. What really keeps me awake at night is to help our customers push the boundaries of innovation and make sure that we help them invent new sustainable ways to make people fly. So this is what keeps me awake at night, innovation. Well, it's great to have you alongside us innovating. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Good luck.